Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Dr. Vivek Lal, and he is a, a specialist in his field, and he's also the founder of Resbiotic. And it's an amazing uh, company that has some amazing products, which I have tried and I like very much, but I'm not going to talk about them. I'm going to let Dr. Vivek Lal tell you a little about himself first, and then we'll talk about all the things he's doing right now and how he's helping thousands of people improve their lives and their health. So take it Thank away. Thank you so much, Stacey, uh, for the introduction. I'm, I'm uh, happy to be on your podcast. I'm happy to have you. Wonderful. Yeah, I know, as you said, like I'm the founder and CEO of Resbiotic Nutrition, which is a science-backed uh, wellness supplement company. Uh, my background is uh, that of a physician and a scientist. Uh, I'm by clinical training, I'm an ICU physician. Uh, by research training, I'm a microbiome scientist. I uh, ran labs which were funded by the NIH and the American Heart Association at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, where I was a director of clinical innovation. I still uh, uh, have association with University of Alabama at Birmingham as the director of clinical innovation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur by passion and... Uh, uh, and with the background that we wanted to bring our research innovations to the general audience, uh, to the public, uh, because one of the major issues I faced in, uh, uh, not only me, but academia faces is the 90% of research, uh, funded research does not get back to the consumers. Right. So we wanted to create a system where we could do uh, academic research pretty good research uh, to create efficacious product, but not only end there, but bring them ourselves through a, uh, through a reliable brand into the audiences. You know, I think it's so important that um, the audience realizes how important it is to have that communication with your doctor. And not only is it good to have a good communication with your doctor, but to apply healthy living to your life too. Because a lot of people, they rely on just what the doctor says, or if a doctor hands out a prescription, they just take the prescription and they think by not changing their lifestyle, by not changing the way they live in their lives, that it's just gonna go away. But it's really a, a combination of uh, taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, taking care of what you're putting in your body and how you live your life, along with good communication skills with your doctor, being honest with your doctor, having good a good relationship. It's it's all a con a cocktail blend, don't you think? Absolutely, uh, that's that's a very valid point, Stacy. Because uh, we doctors recommend things which are clinically studied and have been tested in research trials. But uh, I think the patients need to remember or the customers need to remember that uh, they're not just a statistic, right? right? There's so many factors in their lives uh, which affect who they are and everyone is different from the other. Right. That's the, you know, that's how we're entering the era of personalized medicine, right? What your body uh, uh, structure is, what you are affected with, uh, could be different from someone else right yes so generalizing those things is not the greatest idea uh, we do prescribe things which are statistically validated at a population level but at a person level there could be difference in your habits difference in your what you eat difference in what your microbiome composition is difference in what your genetics is there's so many yes. other factors right uh, so absolutely adopting a healthy lifestyle which is suited to your body in addition to uh, you know getting personalized care from your healthcare practitioners uh, is the way to go you know I, I find that such an important factor because you know so many times when i've speaking spoken to people and also i when i've seen people write things on social media you know they feel oh don't take this or don't do that because it doesn't work i tried it and that's not the case like we like you had just emphasized Every person is different. Every person comes from a different background, different genetics, the way we take care of ourselves, the way we, the foods we put in our body, the way we handle fitness, everything is different. 
So everyone's going to have a different response and people have to realize that, but we also can change the way we feel and change our, our, the, the, our health by changing different aspects in our lives. And what are some of the things that you like to emphasize to people that can really have a huge impact on how they're feeling? If they're going, just trying to stay healthy and, and live a long, happy life, or if they're going through different conditions and illnesses, do you have any suggestions for people on how they can get on the right track to start living a healthy and, and happy and productive life? Absolutely. I think there are several things which, um, you know, over time I've realized are essential for your healthy life, right? One is sleep. Uh, second is exercise. And these are, again, uh, uh, very common things, but very important things that we ignore on a daily basis. Yes. I think perhaps the most important thing is what we eat and what, you know, our gut does. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, when I started studying the microbiome of the gut, et cetera, what I really, it's a relatively new field. It's just 15 years old. Yeah. NIH came up with the Human Microbiome Project in, I think, 2006, seven around that time. Um, and we realized that there are a bunch of bacteria in our body, right? Yes. Uh, we even need to realize there's 10 times the amount of bacterial cells in the body uh, or more than just human cells. So yeah. what are we? We're just a bunch of bacteria. <laughs> so if, if, <laughs> you know, if that is true, uh, how do we modulate them or use them for healthy lifestyle? Right. The richest microbiome, uh, the, uh, the richest or, or, or you know organ in the body, full of bacteria or microbes, is a gut. Right. Okay. And that's the place where all your food gets broken down. These right. microbes have a very, very important role in breaking down the food, how the metabolites are produced. That's where the metabolites which are produced enter your bloodstream. And that's where uh, they go from the gut uh, to different organs like the brain, the lungs, other places. So the gut is the entry point for your systemic health. Yes. Hence, what you eat becomes extremely, extremely important. Uh, right. In addition to eating, what you drink, what your schedule is, what your routine is, when you do certain things, like things like intermittent fasting, etc., coming up, right? Uh, when you do things, uh, when do you rest your gut? They're, they're all of these factors which become important. So that's why I keep uh, food as medicine as one of the top priorities uh, for healthy living. I have to agree with you 100%. I think people don't realize or, you know, like you said, it's it's a fairly new um, area that people have been diving into in the last decade, but people don't realize the importance, you know, they, you know it, it all goes down to the gut and, how, you know, how much good bacteria versus bad bacteria that we have in our bodies and all the different strands and types of bacteria, people are unaware of this and they don't realize that if you don't have a good gut, if you don't have a healthy gut, if your if you're, um, microbiome is, is not in a good place, how it could affect all parts of the body. And it's not just it's not just digestion, but like you said, it goes all the way into all of your different organs, into your brain. And it can, you know, some people, they say, oh, I feel foggy. I can't think clearly. Well, you know, it could all start in the gut. What are we putting in our bodies? How, you know, how are we digesting our food? Do we include good sleep? Do we include, you know, um, there's so many factors you can take into. We can go into a conversation for hours about this. But I, I, I especially our older generation, I don't think they understand, even maybe the younger generation is starting to understand the importance of balance in the gut, having a healthy, having a healthy gut and how that could have such an impact on our health. Can you maybe describe to people the, the, the huge impact that it could have on your overall health if you have a healthy gut? Absolutely. Uh, you talked about uh, the older generation uh, not understanding. Even older, actually the people probably understood more than what we understand now, right? In older yeah. days, uh, there was a lot of emphasis about uh, rich food, different kind of food, yogurt, those kind of things, right? Which actually yes. end your gut. Uh, over time with our uh, 
uh, so-called Western diet, I think uh, people have started giving less emphasis to that, but it's coming back. So I'm, I'm glad to see that transition is happening. How the gut affects different organs is very interesting. You know, in our lab itself, we had the uh, microbiome lab at University of Alabama at Birmingham. We started studying uh, it, it, how the gut lung access works. That, that was our first, uh, you know, initial. Yeah. We were one of the first ones in the world studying that. We all knew the benefit for digestive health, but how could the gut connect with different parts of the body? Now people are talking about the gut brain access. Yes. Gut access and whatnot so we started studying the gut lung access to begin with uh we started first sequencing uh the lung fluids from patients who had lung diseases right okay, older people younger people etc and found that uh the lungs also have a microbiome mm. just like gut. it's very small in amount low biomass but there was something you know wow. uh, so it was a myth being busted right because for years, we always thought the lungs are sterile. Yes. Uh, but in the last 15 years, we've realized that there is a microbiome there. Uh, how does it get there? Maybe we aspirate some mm -hmm. stomach content. That's how it gets there. Uh, but more than just the mere presence of bacteria in the lungs, there were other things happening in the lungs. Uh, and again, this I'm telling you what is, you know, what 10 years of research, I'm trying to summarize it. There were yeah. other things happening in the lungs which were connected to the gut. So what we found out was the good, so-called good bacteria in the gut were producing substances, which would molecules, which would go into the bloodstream or the lymphatics and communicate with the lungs. Right. Go to the lungs and decrease inflammation or de do good things there. So that is what is called the gut-lung axis. Mm -hmm. This is how the bacterial metabolites or other metabolites go from the gut, communicate to the lungs through the bloodstream or the lymphatics. Uh, this is called the gut-lung axis. Uh, so you could actually modulate the gut to modulate the lungs. Similarly, right. you could modulate the gut to modulate your skin or yeah. your brain. That would be the gut-skin axis or the gut-brain axis. So at rest biotic, uh, which is restoration biotic, our goal is to restore uh, different parts of the body right, right. through the uh, that's how we came up with the first uh, gut lung access product in the world called uh, ResB, ResB lung support. And uh, now we are moving on to other accesses and I'll tell you a little more about it in a second. Yeah. Now I'd love for you to, because I, I actually have it. I, I, um, I had gotten it. It was, I just want you to tell people a little about it and how using it could have such a positive impact in their lives. Because sometimes I think people don't realize just by changing the way you eat and then taking certain supplements and certain and 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 using certain types of probiotics and prebiotics and, and how it could just have such an overall effect on your health. Can you tell us a little about ResB? Yeah, absolutely. So ResB is a unique combination of three proprietary uh, probiotic strains. Uh, these are lactobacilli strains. We conducted extensive experiments uh, of these bacteria in first in the lab in in vitro setting. In vitro setting meaning we take cells, we took human cells, human gut cells, and human lung cells, and started putting those specific bacteria in a specific ratio onto those uh, petri dishes, right? Wow. To see what happens to the inflammatory cascade. Yeah. On that, we came up with a specific formulation in a specific ratio and then took it to animal models. My background is I'm a physician scientist. We were, you know, NIH scientists. We we had all these cool animal models to test, yeah. uh, you know, test these things. So we conducted several animal experiments similar, similar to drug development. You know, initially yeah. when we were embarking on this journey, we thought we'll create FDA approved drugs based on this. Right. Uh, so all our labs, everything was set up for drug development, uh, but soon realized that there's a huge consumer market uh, which needs the solution. And most yeah. of the things out there in the consumer market are not developed with the drug development precision and yes. not developed uh, very scientifically. You could sell anything just by marketing, right? Yeah. So how do we capture some of that consumer market and give people efficacious drug-like 
supplements. Right. You know, there are pros and cons of doing that, right? The con, the biggest con is you can't make disease claims. Even if I think or I have shown that RESB could affect some disease states, we cannot make those claims because right. this is just a supplement. If they're regulatory uh, things and we are very responsible uh, uh, when it comes to our regulatory responsibilities, right? So we can't make yeah. disease claims. But uh, the background goes into drug development. So drug development like precision while creating supplements. That was the background. So we took those findings from the uh, petri dishes to the animals and then went on to do clinical trials on it. For supplements, I don't have to do clinical trials, right? But we still wanted to show that it is actually efficacious. We wanted to prove that it is actually efficacious. So we did some clinical trials and sh uh, which showed great results for yeah. the respiratory system and general well-being uh, in patients. And uh, that's that's how RESB lung support came about. So it's not just lung support. Lung support is one of the main impacts. But yeah. uh, to, to begin, it is a very potent probiotic for gut health. So gut health and lung health uh, and general systemic health. I have many customers or many uh, people who give us feedback on how their other systems are getting better. People have joint issues, they're feeling better, skin issues, they're feeling better. Yeah. Although we don't even advertise that. You know, we just advertise the gut and lung benefits because those right. are the things we proved in clinical trials. Because you also have, it, it, it helps with digestion, immune support. So it's really, like you said, it, it affects all different parts of the body and, and especially with your immunity. And, um, you know, it's so important to have a, a strong immune system, especially, you know, with all the different um, illnesses and, and with COVID coming around and with so many, you know, the flu around winter time. And it's good to build your immunity up the best you possibly can. And that, like you said, goes along with the food we eat, you know, taking the right supplements and being able to also, I think, to manage our stress levels. I think people don't realize that also, but, you know, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress, but and that also affects our digestive system and it affects our gut and it affects a lot of other things. So it's, yes. it's like we go back to our lifestyle, you know, it's important to, you know, to really take care of our gut but we also have to learn to take care of ourselves mentally as well as physically and really have that cocktail that we started our conversation with. What do you Absolutely. think? And, you know, uh, I think the pandemic has taught us a lot, right? Like uh, it did teach us why is that I could get the same virus and I end up in the ICU and a similar healthy looking person could get it and just have a cold from that, right? right. So we all are built differently. Yeah. Some people are innately resilient to some things. Some people are innately pre uh, predisposed to some things. Right. Uh, and it all comes down to what your, you know, structure, immune structure of the body is, right? Yes. What triggers the immune system all the time? These are these trillions of bacteria in the body. The microbiome. Yes. That's, it comes down to what is the uh, innate immune structure of your body through, you know, microbiome or other uh, other factors that make you so different from what you are from someone else. And that makes you predisposed or resilient to diseases. And I, I think it's important to take something like Resby also to build up your immune system, to help your immune system. Because some people, you know, someone could be on the other side of the building and cough, and then all of a sudden they get it. Like you said, you know, it's a, you, some people have terrible immune systems. And, and, and when it, when you, when you know that you don't have the greatest immune system, that's when you really should take action. And people that do have a good immune system, they shouldn't always rely and say, oh, I, I won't get it. I won't get it keep up with it and take care of your body so you can keep that high resilience and and be able to ward off any type of, of illness and for people who have don't have a very good immune system to figure out ways on how they could actually help their bodies build that immune system up and gut health like you said and going into the micro um, biome and and changing and taking the right supplements and getting the good bacteria and the bad bacteria to balance itself out to improve your overall health can play a big role what do you think about that i totally agree with that and uh, not only the immune system but people who are prone to allergies th those kind of things yes uh, there's a lot to say about the hygiene hypothesis right like yes uh, <laughs> uh, the more your immune system is triggered uh, uh, and sensitized over time or desensitized over time, 
uh, the less likely you are, uh, you know, to get these kind of things. And um, year after year, research uh, has shown that you have to prime your immune system and uh, in general, all, all systems of the body uh, and desensitize it to many things. So yes, absolutely. Some people are just innately stronger than others, you know? Right. Uh, I, I noticed like for my like own self. Like, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said, and, I was, there was, like, I was uh, just going to say, I noticed for my own self, I used to have terrible allergies. And when I started taking a prebiotic and a probiotic, I, those allergies eventually went away. Again, uh, you know, it, it all comes down to, we can't make uh, disease claims here, but uh, <laughs> we hear that all the time from our uh, customers and, uh, you know, people who are close to us and who take it, their lives have changed. Yeah. I know I've been I've been using um uh, probiotics and prebiotics and I, I take different types of, of supplements each day to help balance my gut and I, I noticed a humongous change in my overall health and even with my digestive system you know I, I once had a very poor digestive system but not anymore and the bloating I used to get consistently, I always used to complain. I feel like I'm in my first try, you know, master of, of pregnancy. You know, I would constantly bloat, constantly bloat. Once I started to use probiotics and prebiotics and I started to change my eating habits accordingly, you know, to what was best for my gut, uh, I, my body did a total turnaround. Absolutely. Uh, you know, our food is broken down, uh, and the fiber is broken down. All of this is modulated by the composition of the bacteria in the gut. You know, if the composition changes, uh, it can it can lead to badness or goodness, right? So why not yes. try to switch it towards the goodness? Yes. It's all about that, creating that right balance for that individual. Right, exactly, exactly. Now you came out with another great product. I started using it. It is the pre B energy and why don't you tell us a little about it because i take it every morning when i wake up and i feel great it gives me a boost of energy i feel you know i feel very very energetic and i use it i put it in my in my morning drink every day and you don't even um you don't even really taste it it just blends in with what you're drinking and i definitely do feel a difference after taking it for a while i definitely notice the difference can you tell our listeners a little about it Absolutely. So uh, after, you know, the success of RESB Lung Support, uh, we were very intentional about what we launch next, right? Uh, there are so many things you could do, yeah. but we wanted something really science-backed, which would create an effect uh, on gut health and other systems. I call it the gut X-axis. Yeah. The first product captured the gut lung axis. Yeah. The second product, we wanted to capture the other gut axis, right? So, uh, Pre-beat, uh, the name is derived from pre, that is prebiotic. So we have a resistant starch prebiotic right. uh, uh, ingredient in this, which is clinically validated in multiple clinical trials, has shown to increase um, specific bacteria such as bifidobacteria and acromancia. Uh, bifidobacteria are so-called the good bacteria, right? Like, uh, yes. for example, when we are in infancy, when we are little, we have a lot of bifidobacteria, which the you know uh, the uh, the abundance of bifidobacteria keeps going down when we get older. So those are uh, the good bacteria. In addition, Ackermansia, Ackermansia uh, is uh, one of the recently identified very important bacteria which uh, do a lot for your metabolic health, etc. Mm -hmm. So both of these are boosted by the prebiotic uh, starch in our uh, in our product. So pre B the pre is prebiotic. The beetroot uh, uh, powder that we have in this uh, that gives it the beet name. So pre beet comes from that. Yeah. Uh, beetroot has been shown to increase nitric oxide signaling. Uh, mm -hmm. Nitric oxide essentially vasodilates or uh, increases the size of your blood vessels, improving circulation, yes. etc. So we tried to create this combination in the lab. We took these constituents, did several experiments in the lab to come up with this uh, right concentration, which would boost your nitric oxide signaling, which would increase, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, we call it ENOS, that is endothelial nitric oxide signaling, 
uh, and then we filed our patents and uh, uh, then came up with the formula. So yeah. uh, we also wanted to give the consumers that daily energy boost. So the third ingredient in, uh, in pre-beat energy plus is a uh, heavy dose of vitamin B12. We all know how important vitamin B12 is and majority yes. of our people are deficient in vitamin B12 anyways. Yes. Uh, but vitamin B12 gives you that instant energy kick uh, and uh, converts is very important in converting food into energy, uh, etc. In addition to neurological benefits and uh, other benefits. So uh, those are the hero ingredients in pre-beat energy plus and uh, it comes in a berry flavor, very uh, palatable berry flavor. Yeah. So people can just mix, mix it in. Uh, most of our customers are just mixing it in water every morning, like including me. I just have a couple of glasses of pre beat morning and evening. Uh, yeah. And you see a noticeable difference in like three to four days from the current perspective. Uh, you know, all the bloating is gone, your regularity improves. Yes. Uh, uh, you can actually feel that fiber working and the energy. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention about the prebiotic fiber and its benefit on uh, collagen breakdown for skin health. So yes. in three to four weeks, you start seeing the skin health benefits also. So yeah, uh, we are very get, we are getting really positive feedback from our customers uh, about prebeat and very excited about this launch. Yeah, I I happen to love it. I've been using it for about over a month now, and I definitely I I noticed the difference. I have one question for you. I don't think a lot of people understand. Like from from when I talk to people, they don't realize. They think, okay, I take a probiotic, but it's also important to take a prebiotic. And can you explain to listeners why it's not just you know because they hear in 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 the media you hear probiotic, 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 but you don't really hear as much about prebiotic. And maybe you can explain to the listeners what what the difference is and what why a prebiotic what job the prebiotic does and what the, what job the probiotic does and how they kind of help each other and help the person if they have both of them in your daily lifestyle. Absolutely. So probiotics are the live bacteria in our gut. Right. We talk about like the bifidobacteria, the good bacteria, lactobacilli, which is in resby, bifidobacteria, ackermansia, etc. But like humans, bacteria rely on food. So yeah. prebiotic, uh, you could think about prebiotics as food for these probiotics. Right. In order for probiotics to thrive naturally, uh, you need prebiotic. Right. Okay. So prebiotic, uh, think of prebiotic as food for probiotics. So prebiotic becomes important. Like in prebeat, the prebiotic fiber specifically increases the good bacteria, bifidobacteria and acromancia. Yes. So we don't have to give the bifidobacteria and acromancia as live probiotics, right. but naturally change your diet with this prebiotic and it increases your bifidobacteria and acromancia. There right. is something called postbiotics also. So yeah. postbiotics are essentially, uh, you know, byproducts of these probiotic bacteria. So when the probiotic bacteria produces some substances, those could be postbiotic. Probiotic bacteria, just the remains of the probiotic bacteria, if the bacteria is dead those could also be considered uh, postbiotics. So uh, our company is taking the lead in pre, pro and postbiotic, uh, you know, and in the in the coming days, we, we might be getting into the postbiotic space also. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. I think also people, you know, have to realize too, it, hydration is very important too, because some people will will take the probiotics, they'll take the prebiotics and they'll be eating and they'll say, oh, I still feel constipated. I still, my stomach still bothers me a little, but then they're highly dehydrated because most people don't drink enough of water. And then also for, to feel the full effects and to get that good digestion and to have, a, you know, and not to be constipated and suffer from constipation, you, and to also be energetic because it would enough of water you're going to feel very fatigued and then people say i always feel tired but it all could go back to not consuming enough of water in your daily diet even though you're taking all these great probiotics and prebiotics you have to remember the importance of water do you have anything to comment about that absolutely uh, you know uh, we'll be surprised how less water people drink right like uh, it's just outrageous. Like uh, people just do not drink water. And you realize <laughs> that when you start actually calculating how much you're drinking. Yeah. So you have to be intentional about drinking water because uh, right from skin health to gut health, uh, everything needs your water. Uh, 
it's also that people have started substituting plain water with other things, right? Yes. Which have different osmolality, different constituent, different effects. So I think uh, we need to re-emphasize the benefit of plain old water. Yes. Uh, and uh, taking a lot of that. Yeah, because I, I think people too, they there's, there's all these different versions of so-called water on the market, but they're not really water and they don't have the same benefits to the body as real water does. Absolutely. Absolutely. So totally, totally valid one. I think water is extremely important and much underrated. <laughs> now, if you wanted to like give people some overall tips on how to get their, them, them, if they're, they're having digestive issues or if they're having, they feel bloated all the time, they suffer from inflammation, you know, their body isn't working right, but they're not really doing anything, you know, they don't really they haven't been doing anything to help their gut to you know go down to the root cause which is usually the gut what would you say to that person what advice would you give them to try to get them on a good path to a to a a, a road that might be really successful and and help their overall health absolutely i think the biggest factor uh, is that their guts gut uh, gut uh, gut are predominantly occupied by these bad bacteria. The microbiome yeah. is uh, dysbiosed or imbalanced. Yeah. So you do need to have that gut reset. Yeah. Uh, the very easy way to start that is uh, having good, healthy diet, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, there is so much processed in the market right now. Oh, it's terrible. And our American diet is predominated by processed food. Uh, if we start taking out as much processed food from our diet as possible, that automatically starts developing, you know, good microbiome. Uh, yes. As less processed, as uh, you know, green as possible. Yeah. Uh, there are there are benefits of uh, uh, vegan or vegetarian diet. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, there are different school of thoughts about, you know, carnivorous diet or a vegan diet. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of that. But as long as the processed part is limited, I think yeah. that is a good first step. Combining that with some good probiotics, which help uh, your gut, uh, some good prebiotics, which uh, leads to better probiotics in your gut naturally. Uh, it, you know, water is extremely important. Uh, but overall, supplementing your healthy diet with a decent routine, yes. a daily routine, right? Uh, uh, imbibing some exercise in your routine, getting your sleep uh, up to the mark. Uh, it's an overall holistic approach uh, to better gut health, not only just by food, but also by habits. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. And I think that's one of the biggest problems is that our society today is always on a go, go, rush, rush. And so many people are eating processed foods and it's literally destroying people's insides. And they don't realize that, you know, if the body can't break it down, it stores it. It doesn't know what to do with it. And then after a while, all those toxins build up in your body and it, and it leaches onto all those organs and it slows down the functions and then your health starts to decline. And then that's when you see all these illnesses and all these things start to pop up and people don't realize if that, you know, you look at some of the parts of Europe and some of the other part, other countries, and they, they have the longevity is, is so much higher and it's because they eat differently. Most of the foods, when you go to another country, half, more than half is banned. They won't let a lot of the American foods into their countries. It is, uh, yeah, it's crazy when I see that, uh, uh, all these blue zones, right? So we have st started uh, traveling into those. Uh, they don't have this kind of processed uh, no. know, food system. I think a system is flawed, so, but... People are getting aware. I think yes. individual awareness is important. Uh, these kind of, uh, you know, podcasts or uh, information, uh, people are uh, getting educated. People are realizing the importance. And I think the pandemic has played some role into that. Uh, yes. You know, people are getting self-aware. Uh, yes. So uh, I think, yeah, we are far away from some of those countries which you're talking about as far as the food system goes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the future could be bright if 
uh, people start getting self-aware and people start propagating this message. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. Now, do you have more than these two products on your website or right now are you focusing on these two and then you're working on others in the future? So we have a, a, a few in the pipeline, but mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, launching a product is very easy for us. We could launch five products, but we want to be uh, launching only the right products to fit the right need and also after proper testing yes. uh, of efficacy and benefits and safety. So uh, yes, we have a few in the pipeline. We might be launching another two this year. Uh, yep. Oh, I'll very exciting. Now, where can we find your products? What website can people go to? So people can go to resbiotic.com. That is R-E-S-B-I-O-T-I-C.com, resbiotic.com. The res in resbiotic is restoration. As I said, uh, the mission of the company is to restore uh, your uh, microbiome for a healthy, uh, healthy uh, living. Uh, so resbiotic.com is a website. We are also available on Amazon. So the resbiotic store on Amazon uh, has both these products too. Oh, excellent. You know, Dr. Vivek Lau, this has been an amazing podcast. I've learned so much in such a short period of time, and I hope you'll be coming back on the show so we can tap into other topics because when it comes to microbiome and it comes to taking care of your gut, there's so many different areas we can go into and discuss further in more detail to help people understand the importance of having a healthy gut and how to go about it and you know and how it affects you know so many different parts of the body which i don't think i think people are beginning to be more aware and they still need you know but we really need to get the word out and we really need to explain it to them more clearly so pe people can you know listen understand and take action because that's what we want them to do we want them to take action absolutely i think uh our health uh our our health is in our own hands right so yes uh, we got to take ownership. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Stacey, for inviting me uh, on your podcast. And it was a pleasure being here. Oh, thank you so much for coming. This has been a wonderful experience. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.